early on in your career? How did you go about getting into yep. Australian Michigan? So I have, um, so like I said, Darren Zara, who a um, good friend of mine, I spoke to him um, at this stage, late, um, early 2014, he had, he's already started working at the Western Jets. So I started picking his brain. Um, and eventually he was how I got my first role within strength and conditioning at the Western Jets. Um, but so I started picking Darren's brain. Um, another friend of mine who I worked with, he just moved from uh, South Africa. I uh, was lucky enough to meet him through a few people, a very intelligent bloke, Neaton. And, you know, he shared similar passions. And, you know, he said to me, if you're doing your level two strength and conditioning course, I'll do it with you. So, you know, I made sure I had the support of the people around me um, mm -hmm. going into the industry because I, I didn't know, I, you know, I did not know what I was doing. I was very new to it. I, if you ask me what MAS was, or if you ask me of any of these, you know, principles I've learned now, I was no, you know, there was no chance I was explaining it to you. So I really latched on to the people around me, the people who had the knowledge of this industry, picked their brains and started to actually learn what strength and conditioning was all about, how it differed from personal training. So you've mentioned a couple of mentors. Who are some other guys that um, helped you out uh, to forge your path? Yep. So, mate, you know, and that's a hard question, a very hard question, because I personally believe anyone I've come across throughout this journey has actually helped me yep. um, because I learned bits and pieces. And in all honesty, mate, we, there's uh, former educators of mine like Callum Downey, Arj Pereira, who they taught me in the Diploma of Fitness in 2010, who I'm still in contact with. I was actually on the phone to Arj today picking his brain you know, and Arj is actually my uh, mentor for um, your strength conditioning mentor. Um, Darren, like I said, I mentioned him. You know, he's a very good friend of mine, a bloke who I grew up with playing football against each other. I was the full forward, he was the full back. We had some good battles on the field. And then, you know, that, you know how it is white line fever. We belt the shit out of each other on the field, but off the field with good friends. What's a good way to get into um, your Bachelor of Exercise Science and, and how do you start working with athletes in the sporting environment? A good pathway, if you didn't get a good uh, ATAR score to get into a Bachelor of Exercise Science is actually the Certificate 3 and 4 at Victoria University. Uh, we're actually yep. a direct pathway and that's the course I coordinate, Certificate 3 and 4 at Victoria University. We're actually a direct pathway into um, Exercise Science at Victoria University. I think it actually gives uh, the student up to seven courses they can get direct entry into. And we're currently okay. working on the new structure to actually get the students credit transfer uh, transfers. So that's one way of getting into our uh, exercise science degree. Um, another way is, yeah, just find a course that's suitable for you. Not all courses will be suitable. Enroll, yep. again, buy in. Me personally, I always say that work as a personal trainer while studying is always gonna be beneficial because you're getting that industry experience, you're getting that coaching experience, and you can actually begin to implement things you're learning in class. So one of the best things I was uh, I was able to do was sit in the classroom for three hours or do a practical on campus for three hours and leave that, drive straight to a session and implement something new for a client. They loved it, I loved it because I was able to reinforce my learning immediately. Yeah, how do you go about getting these contracts and, and getting progressions throughout your career? What's your go-tos? building rapport, yeah, getting to know people. Yeah. Like, you know, I let's be honest, like the soccer club, I had my mate who was, like I said, the vice president approach me. And then from there, even though I thought I'd done a terrible job, I still impressed, you know, Rocco, who was a coordinator of the sports academy who allowed me to do my placement there. Then obviously yeah. my friendship with Darren um, got me into the Western Jets. Um, James McConnell actually got me to do a, I was able to do a internship with him at FC 11, which has gone bust now. Um, so just, yeah, building those rapports and just, you know, being eager to learn because I'm, I don't go into a job pretending I know everything because I don't, I go into a job wanting to learn something new and showing that thing. Uh, what makes you angry? I pet peeves. This actually, this question was derived from Jay Ellis. Thought it was a good question. He was asked this once in an interview today. Off <laughs> what? What? What are my pet peeves? Uh, people not listening. Just the you know, lack of respect. So, you know, it doesn't matter if it's my teaching or if it's uh, the athlete. If I'm talking and I don't have their attention, 
I'm probably annoyed at myself for not being able to get, grab their attention, but at the same time, it's, you know, a bit of respect on their behalf just to listen. Oh, probably, you know, LinkedIn. Again, like I said before, uh, I'm happy to answer anyone's questions on LinkedIn if they message me. Uh, but just just the tone in which some people message me, just like... Got to be respectful, yeah? Yeah, I'm like, mate, I'm, I know I'm a nobody. Like, I still haven't made a name for myself on the international scene. Like, so yeah, cool. But don't tell me how great your programs have been. And then when I actually give you honest feedback, you crack the shit and block me on LinkedIn. <laughs> so, you know... I can take feedback and I, I'm happy to take any type of feedback, positive, negative, or like I said, preferably negative. But, you know, when people can't actually accept something that's being told to them and then they want to rebuttal, want to debate, want to argue about mm. why I'm wrong in my opinion, that really pisses me off and it really fires me up. And then sometimes it can just get messy and I'll just lose the shit. Yeah, yeah love, it. love the uh, honesty, mate. Favourite inspirational quote or life motto? Favourite inspirational quote would be from Coach Carter. The our, deep, our deepest fear. So that's uh, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's a full poem. Um, and, yeah, first time I heard it on Coach Carter, uh, 2003, 2004, whenever it came, got released. And then from that day on, it's one of those things that, you know, it's been the background of my laptop, on my phone, on the wall. So it's probably something that, you know, it's been, I've posted on social media more than once. It's, yeah, probably my favourite quote of all time, our deepest fear poem. Yeah, 